and welcome. We're here for another fantastic case study. We're here with Aaron Bouchard. Hi, Aaron. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Aaron is the owner of Once Upon a Time Weddings. She's a store she's had for nine years now. And Aaron also coaches other wedding store owners on how to build profitable wedding stores. And today we're going to be talking about how Aaron overcame some money blocks as well as um, how to kind of feel the fear and do it anyways um, in order to grow her, both her store and her staff and really help grow her coaching business as well. So Aaron, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, okay. So Aaron, let's go back to, so you've had, you've had your wedding store for nine years. So you learned a lot over the years. And then when you and I started working together, I think this was about a year, a year and a bit ago. Um, tell us what was kind of happening. And at that point where you, you know, you, whatever was happening that made you feel stuck and know you needed help on, on things. Sure. Sure. I had worked with coaches before and, um, I was kind of growing my bridal business um, right before we started working together. I guess that had been about six or eight months before I had moved my business out of like my home. So it was very low rent into a much bigger space, which had a lot more rent um, and more opportunities. But uh, about six to eight months after we moved, I was starting to kind of feel some panic and some, some overwhelm with, how much risk I had taken and how quickly we had grown. And I really, I did a call with you and um, hired you, started working with you because I really wanted to work on like why I was kind of hitting this plateau in my business. I had grown it to this point and I felt like there was so much more potential for the store, for the business, but it was almost as if something was holding me back and I didn't know what that something was. Um, and so I wanted to do some work on like strategy, like how can I keep growing my business, but also some mindset work because I had worked with lots of lo some other coaches on strategy and done lots of like podcasts and courses and things like that. Um, but I had never worked with anyone whose primary, the primary focus was on my mindset. And so what did you learn when we went through the process? What did you learn were some of the obstacles that you, with hindsight now looking back, they were the yeah. obstacles that were keeping you at that plateau? Um, first of all, I would say, um, like working through some of my money beliefs, money blocks, whatever you want to call it, but some of the things that I had believed about how much money I could make and not even really being aware of that's what was holding me back or like that I even had those beliefs, but some of the things, um, you know, like the way I was, I was raised or the, the, the way that money is talked about or, or whether, you know, even women can make that much money, things like that, that had, um, without even knowingly focusing on it, that was kind of what was stopping me from getting to that next level. Right. But then also just like, how do you feel fear in business? Like, how do you run a, a healthy business? Have some risk, take some risk, feel some fear, but use that to like spur you on instead of hold you back. So kind of um, getting comfortable with, with dealing with some of that fear, but also just recognizing that growing a business to the point that I wanted to grow it to, there is going to be some fear that pops up and, and that's, you know, you can kind of face that and deal with it and not let it hold you back. Right. And so what were some of the things that really helped you get to the point where you were like, okay, this is scary, but I'm going to do it anyways. Um, I think developing my confidence more, um, but also just like recognizing that, throughout my journey of being an entrepreneur, like you said, I've been in business for nine years. There have been so many times where I've taken risks and it's paid off or I've faced a fear and it's gone away or, you know, I've had something hard happen, but I've learned from it. Um, and so drawing on those experiences and remembering that like things do work out for me and I already have those skills necessary to keep growing this business and not to be afraid of that. Um, 
you know, sometimes we're our own worst enemy and we have a ton of strengths, but we have like a few weaknesses and we focus solely on those. So learning to like believe in myself again and, and build up that confidence. And yes, I took a bit of a risk by moving the store, but I also gained a huge opportunity. So let's focus on the opportunity instead of on the risk. Um, so kind of learning to change my mindset in that moment and choose what I focus on, choose what I, you know, how I feel a fear how I feel about fear um, and, and choosing to be excited about the opportunities in front of me. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that you said that because I think a lot of people find that difficult because it's just, it's, you're, you're so practiced in looking at what is Mm -hmm. and usually looking at the worst case scenario of what is (laughs) right. Versus, um, yeah, going to the other one. Okay, so now uh, talk to us about, because one of the amazing things that you did is you were running your store and you're also growing a coaching business on the side. Um, So how did you handle that? And what were the kind of the main things? Because I mean, it's it's interesting because it's it's like having a full-time job and a side hustle, um, but your full-time job also is a, a responsibility that like if it, if you don't show up and do the work, you don't get paid kind of thing. Like it's right. So, so talk to us about running two businesses and what helped you kind of like stay focused, stay sane and, um, you know, feel confident in building both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I, um, my focus is the bridal store. I've been doing some coaching on the side. Um, I've used what I've learned over the years in my store to help other entrepreneurs because um, not that I have it all together and not that I know exactly how to do everything perfectly in the store, but I've learned a lot over the years on how to like manage money and how to um, grow your team and how to sell to brides. And so I've used some of those experiences to teach other stores. Right. Um, and it is hard to juggle both. And I like, there are lots of people who juggle a full-time job and then an entrepreneur job on the side or, or being a mom and, and being yes. an entrepreneur. And so I guess, you know, knowing, picking what's important, prioritizing, um, learning to delegate is super important when you have a lot to do. Oftentimes as entrepreneurs, we want to do everything ourselves and we feel like nobody can do it as good as I can, or nobody's right. going to look after this baby as well as I will. Um, and sometimes we, you know, we need to learn to delegate some of those tasks off so that we can use our time more effectively. Um, a lesson I've really l- learned is what can only Aaron do in the store? And then that's what I've got to focus on. If there's other things that other people can do, then I have to learn how to train them to do it. Um, so growing, you know, having the right support system in place, whether it's at home, um, whether it's, you know, in your business, whether it's, you know, I just order my groceries online because I can't go and grocery shop for 45 minutes thing, you know, wherever you can find time saving strategies. Um, and then just also taking time to rest. I think that's one of the other big lessons that you taught me. One of the first exercises you had me do was go away from my phone, let go for, and I, I still remember this. Oh my like, God, I remember this. <laughs> I drove to the beach. I took my phone in the car because the beach is like half an hour away from my house, 20 minutes away from my house. And I had my kids with me. So I had the phone and I left it in the car and I like text my husband. I'm like, I'm at the beach. I will not have my phone. If you want to come join us, you can. And then I left my phone there and we went to the beach for like two or three hours. We took a picnic supper and it was just so wonderful. And it reminded me how much, how important it is that we, um, disconnect from from everything right and I don't know why I was so stressed out about it the store wasn't even open like no you know like there's nothing urgent that's going to come in in these three hours that can't wait until I'm done but it was such an important lesson and now I really try to not be on my phone from six to eight at night um every night so that I'm like I have two full hours with my kids with my family and like the phone can wait the store can wait things can wait um but that was one thing because as entrepreneurs, our tendency is to become so like reliant on that. And so like, oh, we've got to check the messages. Oh, somebody could text us. Oh, this could happen. Um, And the truth is that if we don't have those moments away, we don't replenish so that we can do a better job the next day and the next week and when other things come up that we need to focus on. Absolutely. And speaking of your kids, you just had a third 
and how's motherhood going now with three little ones and yeah. one in your store? Yeah, it's good. We're, it's a it's a bit of an adjustment because um, I didn't didn't take a maternity leave, um, but my husband is off and is and is a huge huge support, um, and we're figuring it out. We've never, you know, it's. Yeah, she's a great, she's a good, good baby, and we're so grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is very, very helpful. Yeah. And one of the things that you had mentioned in the pre-interview that we did was um, you have taught your kids some of the things you learned. So tell us about that and about, yeah. about this. Yes. <laughs> So um, my older two kids um, are were adopted by us a few years ago, and so they have some anxiety, some trauma from those early years before they came to us. Um, they've come a long, long way, but one of the tools that I've started using, especially with my um, daughter who's seven, um, is that having her do the power pose, so sometimes she gets anxious or overwhelmed and I'm I'm using some of what you taught me to do in business with them like teaching them that you get to choose your mindset you yes you don't get to choose maybe if you felt anxious but you do get to choose what you do with that anxious anxiety and and you know what you spend your thoughts on or what you spend time thinking about and so teaching them like when you start to feel overwhelmed or anxious you can remind yourself of all the things that's true about you and you know remind yourself that you're loved and wanted and chosen um, and so giving them those tools you know especially at school because that's often when she gets anxious is mommy's not there daddy's not there um she's starting to like you know feel overwhelmed so helping her um really choose what she focused her thoughts on. It's been really powerful for both of them, but I've been using a lot with Ariana lately, which has been awesome. Oh, that's so yeah. sweet. I love it. Yeah. I can see her now doing it. Yes. Oh, so I know the first time I told her to do it, she like looked at me like I grew a second head, but <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just like, do your, and, and we, we like to listen to Beyonce in our house too. So she likes to sing the song who rules the world. So I'm like, ah! oh, super girl and tell me who rules the world. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really cute. Talk about building confidence from a young age. Yes, yeah. That's well, awesome. just like, I don't know, it's a, it's kind of a simple concept, but it's it's easy to not do. Um, but to think about like who, what you think about, what you focus on is, you know, that's, it's so powerful if you can learn to do that in the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're, clearly we're doing this and the phones ring because you're at your store, but no. <laughs> listen, that's what happens when you're at your store. Yeah. So um, in, in closing, so I think that those were a lot of really good nuggets in terms of, you know, making a decision about where you want your focus to go, um, realizing how far you actually have come. And even for those who have not been in business for a long time, you know, you, you're old enough that you've accomplished other things, that you've done other things and you can utilize those skills and those wins to bring them into your business. Mm -hmm. Right. Which I think is really powerful. All right. Well, um, is, if there's a, the, for those listening, is there any last wisdom you'd like to impart as they're really focusing on overcoming fear and particularly fear around money. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say um, to get to get a cheerleader in the life, whether they choose to work with you, whether they choose to be part of your group, whether they choose to hire another coach. Sometimes running a business can feel super lonely and super overwhelming. And so having someone there to like talk through some stuff um, and help you really focus and and. Um, you know, grow your business and, and stay accountable is really, really important. Um, and then I would say like, oftentimes we don't really realize how much our like family background and our, you know, beliefs around money and our, our upraising or, you know, how much of that actually plays a part into our entrepreneur journey now. So don't undermine that, like spend some time thinking about it, working through it. Um, you know, thinking about what you believe about money and why you believe it. And, um, you know, using that to help you grow your business instead of being afraid of it. Um, and then just, uh, yeah, like when fear comes up, we can choose to focus on the fear or we can choose to focus on, you know, the journey we're on and where we're going and, and what we want to accomplish and what we've already accomplished so far. So 
Awesome. And just encourage, you know, sometimes it's super lonely to be an entrepreneur. Sometimes it feels like overwhelming and, and like, what have I done? What have I gotten myself into? But, um, you know, stick with it. And um, I, I really, really believe firmly in, in every entrepreneur should work on their mindset and should spend some time focusing on that, especially if they are in a um, growth journey. Yes. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Erin, thank you so much for being here yeah. and congratulations on all your success. Very thank excited you. to see how things unfold for you and you have a new challenge with you now, mom of three <laughs> and the store, but I have no doubt you're going to handle that with lots of grace and lots thank of awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Aaron, if people want to check out your store or there are bridal store owners who want to talk to you about helping them grow their store, where can they find you? Yeah, I, th you can find me on Instagram, um, Aaron Christine Bouchard. If you want to follow the store, it's OUT Weddings on, um, on Instagram or on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash bridal strathroy. Um, or you can check us out online at onceuponatimeweddings.ca. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Aaron. And thanks Thank to the listeners. Too. And we'll see you soon.